Terry, we have Professor John Ebel from the West End Observatory on the line. And Professor Ebel, thanks for joining us here on WBZ. Uh, did you feel the earthquake? For at one point this morning, hearing a little noise and wondering, well, that could have been an earthquake, but uh, I'm not sure whether I felt it or not. I tend not to feel earthquakes here at Weston Observatory. We're on hard rock, yeah. which is great for seismic observations, but lousy for feeling earthquakes. And Professor, you know, I'm joined here by our executive weather producer, Terry Eliason, who is saying, you know, at 3.9, uh, this is not hugely significant, but for New England, unusual. Yeah, this is like a once in every five year kind of earthquake. And, um, you know, it, it, it can be pretty widely felt. It's, I'm sure it was felt all over southern Maine and, and the, probably the, the southern quarter of New Hampshire, southeastern quarter of New Hampshire and northeastern Massachusetts. So uh, we get these, as I said, about once every four or five years. Yeah, Professor, we, we got reports from even Western Mass, uh, Cape Cod, uh, of it being felt. What, what can you say about the importance of the depth? So we, I don't know if you have any more information. We, we initially saw eight miles uh, down uh, for depth. Do you know that that to be true? And, and does that, what does that matter? In other words, if it's a shallower quake versus a deeper one, you know, might you feel something more significant? Well, because of this is an offshore earthquake, the depth is not too important for those of us onshore who feel the earthquake. And mm. there's some uncertainty because it's offshore. So, you know, if eight miles gets reported, if five miles gets reported, if three miles gets reported, that's within the, the uncertainty of the calculations. And so to me, th those numbers are all basically the same. Yeah. Uh, because it was offshore, uh, does that align with what you understand that it's not unusual that people in this big of an area of New England could feel it? Well, it's not unusual at all. And mm. in fact, this offshore location is very interesting to me because we know that the, the magnitude roughly 6 to 6.2 earthquake in 1755, which did a lot of chimney damage in Boston, was also centered offshore uh, east of Cape Ann. So this area mm. is a little bit north of it. And we've had lots of offshore earthquakes uh, in the decades that I've been studying seismicity. So this is a very interesting and active seismic zone in New England. And I'll certainly be studying this earthquake to learn more about it. Interesting. So do you feel like there's perhaps some sort of, I don't want to call it a fault line, but some, just some, something, you know, sort of undiscovered there in that area that, uh, and, and how easy or difficult is it to actually investigate, I mean, a, an area underneath the Earth's crust, you know, for you know, volatility or fault lines and, and the such? Well, the earthquakes give us a lot of information about the active faults. And every earthquake that you have means that the rock cracked in the earth. And either there was a pre-existing fault and, and, and the, 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 the fault moved again in the earthquake, or maybe it's creating a brand new fault. We can't tell which directly from from the observations from a single earthquake. But if we add this to all of the other earthquake activity, we can kind of uh, look for patterns that might suggest where there's a fault. And we know that there has to be a pretty substantial fault offshore huh. uh, east and north of, of Cape Ann to have given us the 1755 earthquake. So, so this is a very interesting data point to me. And Professor Abel, also with your knowledge, uh, what about aftershocks uh, with something offshore? Uh, this depth, this magnitude, would you expect some, even if they're small? Uh, yes, there will, certainly will be aftershocks that will be recorded seismically. Mm -hmm. And if the aftershocks get to be, you know, magnitude 2.8, 3.0, or 3.1, let's say, those will be felt probably by the people uh, in the North Shore area of Massachusetts, as well as coastal, hmm. uh, New Hampshire and, and, and South Coastal Maine. Right. You said this is a one in five year event. Obviously, that's sort of an estimate. Do you do you know offhand when the last time uh, New England or the area had an earthquake near 4.0 or 3.9? Yeah, I'm trying to remember the, the, the date and I don't. But there was an earthquake uh, along the south shore of Massachusetts about five or six years ago. Uh -huh. that, that was around 3.9 or 4.0. So it's it's the very similar to this, and that's the last one that was right. this size in New England itself. So this was in that range. All right, Professor John Ebel from the Western Weston Observatory, we really appreciate you joining us. I know you probably are fascinated by what's happening here this morning, and you want to get back to looking at the research. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us on WBZ. Thanks for the information. Okay, thank you very much.